Good evening, everyone. The battle for bragging rights in Alger County girls basketball was on the line tonight as Munising visited Superior Central. I'd like to thank the Cougars staff for getting me set up after I didn't bring everything I needed to shoot the game. Yes, I did remember the camera, though. First quarter, Superior Central gets going, and then the pass is off the mark, and Marissa Immel goes coast to coast for the hoop, and that makes it 9-0 orange and black. A little bit later, Immel with the steal ahead to Kelsey Ackerman. Not quite Frankie Matson does a little bit better, and the Mustangs are up 16-0. Sydney Emard inside to Emma Rondo, and she's going to find hands in her face, but she gets the first points of the game for her team with a little more than a minute left in the first quarter. Then Immel will find Matson again, and she just decides to turn around and put it up and in. Second quarter for a nice crowd at the Eben area gym. Immel to Cayenne Went. That one's good. That made it 24 to 2. And then Peyton Bonneville will get the steal and the score for the Mustangs. And as you can imagine, things were going pretty well, except if you are a Cougar fan. And this guy kind of tells you how things were going. Taylor Silta did get Tori Tinner for this layup. And everything went Munising's way, and the Mustangs won 56 to 13. One other girls game tonight, the Eastern UP St. Ignace turned back Cedarville 60 to 36. The NMU Hockey Wildcats usually hold a small press conference during the week so the media can catch up on last weekend's results and get a preview for this weekend's games. Every once in a while, something fun can happen. This is forward Zach, Dam Zach Diamantoni. He arrived first at the Izzo Mariucci Academic Center. He earlier texted mm -hmm. freshman defenseman yeah, I mean, Phil Ballou like that you're supposed well, to wear a suit and tie to these the gatherings. As weekend. you can tell, there is not a dress code two, for these three. sessions. Ballou walks in and just about blew a gasket when he arrived and noticed he didn't need to be dressed up. Now Ballou returned, took off the tie, and then we talked about this weekend series at home against Alabama Huntsville. Very hard working disciplined team so um, it's always a good test they like to get to the net throw bodies around and, and get the puck deep so it'll be a good test um, I think we're excited for it from day one right I came in it's been a very comfortable environment and I'm very thankful for that because it's allowed me to be comfortable and be able to play uh, play the game I like to play so uh, it's been a good fit so far and uh, I'm really excited to see what the second half has to bring they tied tech at tech they beat Ferris twice in Ferris they um, just beat Ferris down there. I, they, I mean, they're, they're a much improved hockey team, and uh, you know, I, they have really good goaltending. We know that. They have uh, their forwards can all get up and go. It looks like they have some defensemen that are playing well. The Gosling kid just got a hat trick on Saturday night. Wildcat forward Troy Loggins will miss Friday's game due to a one-game suspension for hitting a player in the head Saturday at Alaska Anchorage. James Vermeulen will miss a number of games with a broken jaw. Face off both nights, 7.07 p.m. And don't forget, all kinds of information is available on our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. In case you had not heard officially, former Michigan Tech hockey player John Scott has retired from the NHL. He made a pretty good article in the PlayersTribune.com to talk about his retirement after being in the All-Star Game and the MVP last year. Very nice. All right. Hey, that guy looked good with a coat and tie on, or at least the tie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was fine. <laughs> he must really like to just be comfy. Yeah. Sure. Maybe in a uniform, he's more comfortable. Hockey players don't like dressing up that much. No. Sounds like it. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>